Good? Yeah, we're good. Today we're going to work on a 2003 Jeep Grand Cherokee that we picked up for our uh, like a fishing rig type of deal, you know, just kind of beat on it, whatever. So the current problem is, is that it had an impact into the front left or driver's side wheel. And this car does have an alarm. So the alarm box is located in that particular corner. And the car will not start right now, so I'm just assuming that the relays that come with the alarm box uh, probably got damaged or just shaken or something just got loose and it's not sending the signal to the coils, therefore the Jeep cannot start. It has a fuel supply, but it has no spark. And this one is a uh, coilover type Jeep, so that means that it does need to have a signal from the ECM to turn on the relay for the coils to fire whenever you know during the firing cycle regardless so I'm just gonna take it apart look around take a look inside here and see if anything got loosened or any of the fuses blew or anything like that perhaps maybe even uh, look up the wiring diagram and maybe remove that whole arm completely because uh, the alarm was set up for an auto start or a remote start and I'm thinking that's messing with the system here Okay, let's, uh, I kind of got it pulled apart. So let's see where the alarm box is. It's kind of tucked up underneath in there. So I'm gonna have to cut some zip ties and just uh, pull it down and sort of trace the back to wiring or see at least what kind of alarm it is so I can look up the wiring diagram for it. Okay, let's go to work. Okay, so what I did is I, Remove the alarm, pretty much kind of disconnected most of it out of there. Here's how that looks basically. So, what they did was, yeah, I mean, this is a terrible wiring job there, of course. So, what they did was they clipped the signal wire for, for this one. Uh, looks like this one is for um, this is a PCM, I think, uh, connection wire to power on the PCM once you turn the ignition on or something like that to give it a signal to get ready and then uh, these guys right here I believe this was the ignition ignition signal coil I mean uh, this one was for the to send a signal to the ignition to get ready and start working anyway so what I did in basic manner I connected you know removed the relays that they had in here and all that BS. Oh, this is just right now feeding in, but you know, it's not going really anywhere because I could remove the control box itself. So I'll have to work on that and clipping all this off and removing and then maybe doing some soldering on all these joints that they messed up. But anyways, now at this point, since I had these two connected here and then these two signals connected here, it should be theoretically working, but we'll see. I'm not sure if that's going to be the case. So, what I tried to do is I have tried to read the system with this and it just wouldn't. So right now the symptom is that when I turn the key over, the security light comes on for the key, you know, as if somehow perhaps it messed up uh, the maybe BCM or whatever. So when I try to turn it over, it just turns over, there's no start. Okay, so, but, what's really concerning is that that security key in there, and it just keeps coming back. So, in theory, what I'm thinking is, since my OBD, for whatever reason, from here to the PCM has no connection, either A, during the accident that was in that fender right there, in, in there it uh, disrupted the wiring that goes through here and then kind of goes along the apron and then through the front and then to the other side or B uh, 
there is you know it blew some sort of a fuse or a broken relay that's supposed to you know uh, activate it so i think what i'm gonna do next is i'm gonna go and check the fuses and the fuse box because i checked every single fuse here and i checked the diagram um, they're all fine none of them are blown so let's go kind of take a look at that side at the other fuse box and see okay so here let's uh test out our fuses to see if any of that's going to be um if any of them are blown i think it should probably okay so that one's good that one's good let's see which one is the pcm okay does it so right here if you can see we have a tandem fuse for the pcm so this has got to be this one right here okay that one's that side's dead oh okay so looks like we have a dead fuse all right let's replace that okay all right so let's see yeah that's a 10. okay Let's check the rest of them. Good. Good. Okay. All right, so that fuel pump uh, relay, what I did was I just, you know, I manually activated it just to see if I have any fuel pressure at all. Just because when you turn the ignition on, the fuel gauge shows empty. So, but now I suspect that since the blue fuse was blown for the PCM, um, that also was not showing the correct level just because of it because I guess it goes through the PCM and then into the fuel gauge all right let's go and try to turn it over and see if that will allow us to start it okay oh, oh look at that the light went off victory sweet and that's awesome so we figured this guy out all right now we can actually see if we can get some connection going on no I don't want to exit see if we'll talk to it now oh <sighs> Now that's exciting. Actually got this thing figured out. Sweet. Accessing pin connector, automatic. Let's run this sucker and see what it will show us. If there's any check engine or pending codes in this thing. But so far so good. This is pretty exciting. This is awesome. Like, yeah, I spent a couple hours messing around with this thing and you know, it feels like I accomplished something, which is great. Okay, automatic. Let's see if it will talk to the PCM today. I suspect it should. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is exciting. Yes. Yes. And it has almost a half a tank of gas, which, so I was correct. Now it shows that. So when the PCM put it talk, oh, and now we got, so it's actually 2004 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Sweet. All right, so here's our communications. There, let's do a health report. Then we'll let it do its thing. This is awesome. This is really, really awesome. Oh, I am so excited about this. I think that's going to be super ecstatic. I was kind of thinking, starting to think that there's like definitely a major wiring problems. So, all right, well, let's get back to it once it's done scanning. All right, it's almost done communicating there. Come on, focus. Focus. 32%, it's a little slow. 
So the ABS is a fault and then we got a DCM fault. That's probably all from the communication error with the PCM. Great. Okay, so this is great. This is exciting. We got this thing figured out. It started, it's running. Now I want you to you know, just main mechanical things to get them fixed up. And you know, we can go and take it off fishing or whatever. Great. So now, uh, now, uh, <laughs> considering the whole thing, I think I'm gonna need to buy a new front axle. I believe it's a Dana 30 here because uh, the C, whatever, the O that holds the ball joints, it's all bent in and uh, the ball joints ripped out of it. So, I don't know if I can actually bend it back properly to a proper angle. So most likely, we just have to go and pick up a new uh, front axle. Uh, still gotta figure out what kind of. Uh, ratio or gear ratio it is and just kind of go from there all right so thank you for watching hopefully this was useful you know press the thumbs up button uh find the um, i think it's on that side somewhere the subscribe button press it lightly gently you know massage it and then uh stay tuned i'll see you guys next time peace